First, let's find out, is your use case a data intensive use case? Do you need an application that is data intensive? So if an application uses a lot of data or it generates a lot of data, and if the complexity of the data changes very quickly and it and the speed of change of that data also increases quickly, if either of these is true for you, then you have a data intensive use case. Typically, big websites like LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, they are data intensive. They have millions of users coming and using their websites daily. And so to build such a system requires very different skill sets. A typical data intensive application looks like this. This is a typical components and architecture. So that we have users here. There could be millions of them using the system at the same time. There is a API server. Typically we have traffic layers in between which do load balancing. Uh, once a load is balanced because there are millions of users coming in, it hits the application logic or the application servers, assuming the authentication, authorization, and everything passes. The application code from the client request checks if the request can be served out of a cache. A cache uh, is quick for reads. And if it is so, and if it's a read request, then it can return back fairly quickly. If there is a cache miss and there is a write, then the primary database is updated. When the primary database is updated by the application code, there's a change capture mechanism, and there is more code in the application layer to capture changes in the data systems to update the cache so that certain parts that are invalid are changed. It also updates the index with new information. There are certain use cases, like if you're searching for someone on LinkedIn, then it or searching for a job on LinkedIn, then it calls a full text index. Index helps with quick lookups of large amount of data. It's stored in ways that are efficient for searches based on keywords or based on facets. So the application code, as you see, is, is the glue between the cache, the primary database, the index. Also the application code emits messages uh, as to handle asynchronous uh, system logic, for example, sending an email. Then it sends uh, a message to the message queue, something like Kafka, uh, and asynchronously processes and sends out an email. So these are the big components, uh, main big components that you will typically see in every big data intensive websites or applications. To quickly summarize, the database is the source of truth, Oracle, MySQL, some examples, caches, for temporary storing an expensive operation and helps speed up reads. So memcache, redis, couchbase, etc. Full text indexes for quickly searching by keyword or filter. Apache Lucene is a very common example. Message queues like Kafka for message passing between processes on different machines. Stream processing for near real-time data aggregation like Samza and Spark. Batch processing for ex large amount of data processing in chunk like Apache, Spark, and Hadoop. And then there is application code. And as you saw, it's the glue. It's the connective tissue between most of these components. So the role of the application developer is to design data systems for reliability, scalability, and maintainability. As you can see, the system is designed in such a way that there are use cases that are served out of the cache, use cases served out of the database, use cases from the index. And there are systems that don't require instant response and they can be done asynchronously with a delay and you use an asynchronous systems for it. So these systems have to actually be reliable, scalable, and maintainable. So let's get into what each of these terms mean. So reliability is fault tolerance from human software or hardware faults. The system should be able to ensure that there is no unauthorized access and that the output is expected uh, as per design and the performance is good enough for application to be usable. Deliberately doing chaos testing helps with finding out issues in the system. Hardware components also fail on a regular cadence. 
So designing for full machine failures is very important as part of reliability. Bugs need to be fixed and caught as early in the process as possible, ideally before the commit goes through into the production systems. Uh, and there should be system that to monitor and test um, before it goes to production. So, so automating tests and staging testing environments help with uh, making sure that your code is reliable. And there also needs to be a way to quickly roll back because you can do all of these things, but if you cannot roll back your change, if a failure does happen, if you miss something, then that's a problem. So reliable systems are the basic uh, need because based on this, the company's revenue is dependent, the legal compliance based on certain uh, laws, and also productivity of the users using your system. So reliability is a very important pillar for the application developer to keep in mind. Next up, scalability. Scalability ensures systems uh, can scale with higher traffic volume and complexity of the new system that gets added over time. Describing the traffic load with peak number of reads, writes, and simultaneous users will help you model the system for scalability. Based on how heavy your read or write traffic patterns is, you can either front load or back load the processing on, of the request. So certain request, you there is time sensitivity and so you cannot uh, front load some of the heavy processing. Capacity planning is part of scalability um, and it's best to do capacity uplifts regularly based on traffic growth. Online systems care more about response time. So if a user is waiting for certain things to get done, then response, is, response time is more important. But an offline system where insights, etc., are generated can be done offline and they deal with throughput mainly. Remember that the end user's response time includes your server response time, so it's important to monitor server response time, but a lot of network is between, a lot of systems in between. So end-to-end -end user monitoring for both system performance and perceived performance is quite critical when you think of scalability. And dealing with 90th, 95th percentile is a good way to measure service level agreements and uh, service level objectives. There are two main techniques for scaling. Scaling up, where you take on and buy more powerful, beefy machines, and scaling out, where you distribute a uh, load across smaller, less heavier machines in a horizontal way. So that's scalability. Scalability is critical for your growth. Reliability is the foundation. Scalability helps you grow. And then you can only grow if your code is maintainable. So ensuring that as we add new people, to work on building new and new applications, logic and new and new features, but the productivity of your developers are impacted. So there are three questions you can ask to check if your systems are maintainable. So is it operable? Is it easy to get system up and running and monitor the system's health? And if it's easy to configure and overwrite, certain times uh, the default behavior might not work. So the system needs to be testable, so easy to operate and maintain. It should be simple, easy to understand and ramp up. So there should be use of good design patterns, and good documentation and use of clean code techniques so that new people can quickly ramp up based on existing good patterns. And it should be evolvable. Is it easy to change your system for from issues that come up or for adding new features? Regularly refactoring your code and making sure you use better and better abstractions helps you to get more people to contribute to your code base. And regularly reducing code debt is another critical thing. At the end, remember there's no one magic solution for building a high, high, high scalable system for everyone. There are these systems that we have looked into for what, what kind of uh, components go into a data intensive app. And based on your use case, your solution will be custom to your needs. So as long as you have good idea about some of these key pillars to look into, like reliability, scalability, and maintainability, you will build the right systems. And in this video series, we are gonna get to becoming the master of building a high scale data intensive application that can handle millions of users at scale. Thanks.